The Alps are a mountain range located in Europe, famed for its prominent pointed peaks and the idyllic chalet villages nestled in the glacial valleys beneath them. Spanning a stretch of nearly 750 miles and through the borders of several countries, this range is visited by mountaineers, skiers, and sightseers alike from all around the world. Marmolada is one such alpine peak located in the Dolomites range of the Italian Alps. Standing at 10,968 feet at its peak, it is far from the highest of the many alpine peaks, but it is, however, the tallest mountain in the Dolomite range and is a popular destination for hikers in the summertime and skiers in the wintertime, and Marmolada's visitors are serviced by a tram that takes its passengers to the top of Pocaroca, which conveniently brings its riders to just 100 feet below Marmolada's true summit. On the north side of the mountain lies the Marmolada Glacier, a massive slab of ice that looms above the ski slopes lying beneath it. Like many alpine glaciers, the Marmolada Glacier is frequently host to avalanches throughout the wintertime, when the steep, thick bed of ice is covered by loose snow, which builds until it is propelled by gravity down Marmolada's steep northern slopes. However, while avalanches are commonplace on the glacier throughout the wintertime, much less common are avalanches that take place during the summertime, when the layer of loose snowfall is entirely absent from the equation. In late June of 2022, Western Europe was in the midst of an intense heat wave as temperatures soared to unusually high or historically high numbers in countless locations throughout the region. By early July, the sweltering heat hadn't faltered, but rather continued and as many Europeans sought a reprieve from the heat, a visit to the cooler alpine temperatures of the Alps was an ideal way to escape the scorching summer weather. On Sunday, July 3rd, 2022, numerous people would travel to Marmolada for a Sunday of fresh air hiking and climbing on the mountain. It was an unusually warm day, with temperatures at higher elevations on the mountain reaching 10 degrees Celsius. That afternoon, at approximately 3.45 p.m. local time, suddenly the peaceful quiet of the mountain air was pierced by the crack of an enormous 85-meter-wide, 25-meter-high serac breaking loose from the Marmolada Glacier, just below Pocaroca, taking a large portion of the glacier from the mountain with it, as it formed a massive avalanche of over 200,000 meters cubed of glacial ice and debris which cascaded down the north face of the mountain, sweeping up over 20 hikers and several mountaineers on the slopes below it, as it continued to thunder down the mountainside for quite some distance, before finally coming to a halt not far from the Fadaya Reservoir beneath it. As the avalanche had been witnessed by numerous people, avalanche rescue personnel were immediately dispatched to the scene of the disaster, and many found themselves overwhelmed by the sheer volume of ice and debris they faced when first arriving at the scene, while the now jagged and unstable glacier above them loomed ominously, threatening to collapse again at any moment. However, the rescue teams on the ground who were assisted by avalanche search dogs would also receive aerial assistance from helicopters and drones to aid in their efforts. And as news of the tragedy began to spread, the rescuers urged members of the public to report missing people directly to them. They further searched the parking lot for vehicle license plates to expedite this process of contacting the potentially missing. Their efforts proved to be largely effective throughout the rest of the day, as the rescue parties had recovered the bodies of seven people and had evacuated a further eight people with serious injuries to nearby hospitals for treatment, with two of them in critical condition. However, on the 4th, there were still more than 12 people still unaccounted for on the mountain, but aerial reconnaissance efforts were halted as the weather had begun to foul, and not long after, boots-on-the-ground efforts were also halted as rescuers were apprehensive about the likely possibility of another avalanche sweeping them away as they searched the debris field for the missing. The foul weather continued to delay the search efforts through the 5th, but by July 6th, 
the weather had cleared enough to resume their search for the missing, and on that day, a further two victims were located, bringing the death toll to nine, with a further three people still unaccounted for on the mountain. The following day, July 7th, the search team located another body, bringing the casualty count of the disaster to 10 people, with just one person reported as still missing. However, many of the victims were badly mangled by the immense force of the avalanche and nearly unidentifiable, as the rescue parties found various body parts strewn throughout the debris field, with six of the ten casualties still being unidentified by the evening of the 7th. The rescue teams would be unsuccessful at locating the final missing person on the 8th, but the following day, July 9th, the search team would find the remains of the final missing individual, bringing the final death toll to 11, 9 Italians and 2 Czechs. In the aftermath of the disaster, a cause for the unusually large collapse was immediately sought out. The most glaring factor that was a likely contributor to the disaster was the heat wave, which had raised the temperatures to well above freezing on the glacier for over a week, which likely weakened its structure as the ice began to melt at a faster rate. It was also noted that the glacier had begun to form a large crevasse throughout the previous decade, which would become the eventual fault line from which the mass of ice would shear from on the afternoon of July 3rd. Another likely contributing factor in the severity of the slide was the deeply graded slope of Pocoroca, which caused the deluge of glacial ice to tear down the mountainside with considerable speed and force. However, the most commonly reported cause for the disaster was cited as global warming, with the Italian Prime Minister Mario Draghi stating when questioned about the media about the cause of the collapse. This is a tragedy that certainly had an element of the unpredictable but is also without doubt linked to the deterioration of the environment and the climate situation, he said. While the Italian government has not released an official report about the exact causation of the breakage as of the time of making this video, it has been widely theorized that the mechanism that caused the breakage was a buildup of water beneath the surface of the glacial ice bed due to the high air temperatures, which caused the Serac to begin to slide downwards as the water created a slick surface between the rock and ice, which accelerated its collapse. As the glacier fell, the water likely propelled the ice further downwards as it began to lift from the mountain, which in turn sheared off more of the glacier as the water from beneath it was also released. This mechanism of collapse is very similar in nature to the glacier collapse in my video about the mega tsunami in Latuya Bay, Alaska, which was instead triggered by an earthquake. However, formal investigations into the exact mechanism of the collapse have not yet been completed, as the site is still a considerable risk of further collapse at any time, and the glacier is now a jagged, fearsome reminder of the collapse that occurred and claimed the lives of 11 people that fateful July afternoon. Thank you all for watching.